We're back here with John Randy, and we're getting set for World Series of Fighting 30 that's going down Saturday night. Start time of 11.30 p.m. Eastern time. For those in Canada, you can watch it here on Fight Network, taking place from Las Vegas, Nevada. And with World Series of Fighting, they have an opportunity here. I think Dave Branch is one of their more intriguing stories that they have going at the moment. The, your light heavyweight champion, but on this night, he'll be defending his middleweight title against Clifford Starks. And it wasn't all that long ago, defeating Teddy Holder in Memphis. I think that David Branch, he's someone, at least I think, that you're, you're seeing within the World Series of Fighting model that's someone that uh, does stand out when he is fighting on one of these cards. I personally believe that, uh, you know, we saw Dave Branch. We've seen him grow. Uh, we had the chance when we went down to New York City to go to Henzo Gracie's Academy. He, he, that's a place that he calls home. He's constantly getting better with all the talented fighters that go through the doors of one of the best jiu-jitsu coaches on the planet. So I'm, all you have to do is look at his past performances. This guy is a finisher. He's aggressive. He gets you down to the ground. He's going to beat you up on top. If the opportunity presents itself, he's going to look for submissions. And I think this is an excellent uh, fighter for the World Series of Fighting. I personally believe that he belongs on the big stage, but the World Series of Fighting, they should hold on to him because uh, he is a very exciting fighter. And it seems that we're seeing this in the UFC right now, this idea, so much of it that we've exhausted discussing about Conor McGregor moving up in weight and trying to balance all of this, leaving divisions on hold. In World Series of Fighting, the depth is not such an yeah. issue that a guy competing at two different weight classes at the level of a Dave Branch, where necessarily it's suddenly putting one division on hold while he goes to fight. He fought Teddy Holder. He's going to fight Clifford Starks if he's victorious. I mean, he has the ability to go back and forth, and it's not like you're clogging up one division by this guy being able to balance both. It seems like a smaller organization like World Series of Fighting can uh, better, better acclimate to this kind of this kind of promotion of a guy fighting in two-way classes. I think one of the reasons why is if you try to compare it to the Ultimate Fighting Championship, they have so many shows and they have to fill that. You need, for example, you'd mentioned Conor McGregor. Well, they're already talking about it. You know, he's getting ready to fight at 170 pounds. Meanwhile, his 145-pound title kind of in limbo. They're talking about Jose Aldo and Frankie Edgar fighting for the interim title. But with the World Series of Fighting, they don't have three shows a month. They don't have a show every single month. So Dave Branch can, you know, he can take the more interesting fight and right now, let's be honest, you know, they're developing their division. You know, we talked about this fight with Teddy Holder. Yes, he had a win over Thiago Silva, but you've got to develop the divisions. And I think a guy like Dave Branch is going to at least bring the uh, hardcore fans to the table. And from there, you just got to develop things. Now, so much of World Series of Fighting has been centered around its welterweight division. I mean, we saw that with, with Josh Berkman and the introduction of John Fitch. And largely on both the skills and the controversy <laughs> involving now former champion Husamar Pajaras who has been stripped of the title, and now that vacant title will be decided between John Fitch and Zhao Seferino, while Paul Harris, and who many people feel is probably most deserving of fighting for this vacant title, Jake Shields, will be off at the Polaris event, and Paul Harris... Not Paul Harris event, exactly. Yeah. So, which, which it goes down in the UK, and what's interesting about it, you know, people you know, point the finger at Husamar Polaris to say this guy is a bad guy, he tries to hurt people, tries to rip off the, their legs, tries to hurt their, uh, hurt their body, well, he's going to be facing one of the best leg lock guys in jiu-jitsu and Gary Tonin, so I don't know if he's going to be able to do it. He might get a dose of his own medicine. As you mentioned, Jake Shields also on that card. He should be in this mix. Right now, the world... Why is he not? I know it's strange. The World Series of Fighting should be focusing on their 170-pound division because it's a, it's a division, I believe, that will definitely bring the hardcore fans and maybe with it some of the casual fans that might know the Jake Shields, the Paul Harris's, the John Fitch's. And again, if you watch the, the tournament, the lightweight tournament, Zeferino got that win over Brian Foster, and then Foster ended up beating him later that night. Where do you peg John Fitch at right now? I mean, he's certainly, he, he's at a bit of a crossroads in his career yeah. at this point. I think most would favor him here against Joe Zeferino, but in terms of his long term here, competing at 170 pounds, what, what do you see right now for John Fitch facing? Well, what I look at is John Fitch is 38 years old. That's that's a reality, you know. Yes, the, the, this fight with Zeferino, as I pointed out, it's a 155 pound tournament fight going up to 170 pounds. I know he's fought there in the past, but John Fitch has faced some of the best fighters on the planet. And I think, you know, what we've heard from the World Series of Fighting as they pay their fighters very, very well. And I wouldn't be surprised if John Fitch decides, you know, this is a good fit for me as long as the organization stays around, continues to have shows. 
he's one of the bigger names on, in the promotion, so why not stick with it? You know, if Justin Gaethje, for example, making over $100,000 a fight fighting for the World Series of Fighting. So if Fitch can get himself anywhere near that, especially when you're able to go and get your own sponsors, if you can fight in your own backyard, he can make a good chunk of change fighting there. And as you mentioned, Zeferino, when we last saw he was part of that one-night eight-man <laughs> tournament, which featured one of the most bizarre endings ever, as he submitted Brian Foster, who then came back and beat Zeferino in the finals to get the next lightweight title fight. So Zeferino now coming up to 170 pounds for this fight. Nonetheless, still a very dangerous yeah, submission fighter here. And I think that... I mean, a lot of people might, maybe are favoring John Fitch, but I think there's, there's a lot of questions about John Fitch as well. Yeah, true, but at the same time, there's nothing John Fitch hasn't seen. He's been in there with some of the best fighters on the planet, fought arguably one of the best pound-for-pound -pound fighters in the world in George St. Pierre. The guys at American Kickboxing Academy, they have shown him everything, so I don't think he's going to be surprised. I think his experience, uh, his, his strength, his power, his fight IQ, he'll, he'll get the victory in this. Now, fight. we're speaking about elite-level grappling. We have to include Vinny Megalesh in that discussion. Yep. He'll be fighting at 205 pounds at this card on Saturday, taking on Jake Hune. I mean, uh, on the ground, this guy is world-class. I mean, Vinny Megalesh has, has always been... I mean, that has been his bread and butter. And I think within this light heavyweight division, again, we're looking at not the deepest of divisions. And you talk about future possibilities for Dave Branch at 205 mm -hmm. pounds. Uh, Vinny Magalesh would certainly be in that discussion if he can continue this win streak yep. and get a win over Jake Hune. Yeah, but if you're Hune, you do whatever you can to avoid the ground. Don't get close to this guy to the point where he's going to jump guard. You have got to make Vinny Magalesh pay. You've got to hit him in his head as many times as humanly possible. You've got to pick your punches because Vinny, even though he's improved in the stand-up stand department, if he goes to the ground with Kuhn, it is over. He's got too many setups. He is too knowledgeable in the grappling arts and it will be an easy and a very quick night for Vinny if the, the fight goes to the canvas. I think that as well, when you have these cards, I mean, World Series of Fighting, they luck out. They largely have this weekend to themselves when it comes to major levels of mixed martial arts. I think it's very key that as they continue forward in 2016, Make your event feel as such and have some announcements on your card. Have some, some anticipation coming out of the card for what is next and what, what your plans are. Yep. Because that's something that I see World Series of Fighting, they do struggle with when it comes to traction. And then all of a sudden a card is coming up and, and not everyone is familiar with the fights. Like grab your audience and then really use it for all it's worth and make sure that they have a reason to come back and know when to come back. Yeah, I agree. You have to make sure the date is imprinted in people's minds as well. They also have to try to sell their audience on the future stars, the prospects. For example, Khabib's younger brother, um, Abubakar Nurmagomedov, on the card, 11 and 1. This guy, and he's on the prelims. He's on the though. prelims. He should be focused, especially when we're, you look at the fact that his brother's fighting in like 10 days from now, less than two weeks' time. So they have a storyline there. You've got to go with the storylines when you have it. So I have a feeling it's going to be an entertaining card. It's just, again, it's a work in progress. They're trying to figure out what works, how to get as many people in the, in the seat in the in the auditorium as well as getting uh, people watching on tv it goes down saturday night at 11 30 p.m eastern time you can watch it here on fight network in canada and you can follow along at fightnetwork.com to get the results as they happen and of course you can download the free fight network app and follow us on social media on twitter facebook youtube and instagram